and welcome to Second Act TV. Today we're talking lasting relationships and sizzling sex after 50. Be sure to stay tuned. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today we're on location with Judith Clare and Frank Wiegers, the founders of Top Gun Love. Judith, Frank, thank you so much for inviting us to, you know, to your home today to talk lasting relationships and sizzling sex. <laughs> our pleasure. Oh, this is, no, we've really been looking forward to yeah. this. So uh, for our viewers, I, I should tell that you are a married couple yeah. and you started a, well, a relationship counseling practice, Top Gun Love. Tell, how did that come to be? Tell us a little, give us some background. I'm a former, former fighter pilot turned love, sex, and relationship coach. I went from warrior to lover, and actually I, I wish I'd gotten to the lover a little bit quicker. I fought my war in Vietnam. I fought my war in relationships. I've been divorced three times by now. I'm done with war. So I said, I gotta figure out how this love, sex, and relationship stuff works. So I started studying everything I could about love and sex and relationship. And what I found was really interesting. The relationship teachers wouldn't talk about sex and the sex teachers weren't very good at relationship. And I thought, you know what, those two go together. So I start telling the guys about all the stuff that I was learning, and they said, man, you ought to be teaching this stuff. And I'm, so here we are. Yeah, well, and then that's the name, Top Gun Love. Oh, exactly. And <laughs> I love the way, yeah, that way that goes together. Well, you know, the Top Gun metaphor is really great because they're really courageous men and women who do something really dangerous. Flying fighters is a dangerous business. And yet they commit themselves to study and practice nonstop, always trying to be the best. Wouldn't it be great if we did that in our relationships, always studying and practicing to make our relationships and our love life better than ever? And it's my understanding Judith, that your background is counseling for a long time. Is that correct? Yes. Let me tell you my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been, um, had two passions. One is spiritual and one has to do with art. When I was a kid, I was Orthodox Jewish. And then I went to this arts high school in New York called the High School of Music and Art for Fine Arts. And by the time I graduated, I was now an Orthodox Bohemian. Mm. In order to advance my credentials as a Bohemian, I hitchhiked through Italy with a friend and then went over to North Africa, hitched across the Algerian-Moroccan border while they were at war in a mini skirt and no bra. <laughs> when I came to my senses, I came back to the States and there were a bunch of things I wanted to do. And because I am extremely spiritual and also wanted to be able to um, be all I could be, I began studying counseling, personal counseling and then later relationship and career counseling. In 1978, I opened, in LA, I opened Judith Clare Counseling. And due to that, <laughs> with my background and his, we thought, wow, you know, having been around the block, both of us, we had 158 years of experience and we had everything that we knew that we could share. One of Judith's best friends was a media coach and he invited us to a seminar. And, and, hey, I got a chance to talk in front of the room and he said, tell everybody what you do. And I said, well, I help people with love, sex, and relationship with coaching and seminars. He went, yeah, yeah. You and all the other Tantra teachers in LA, he said, tell everybody what you used to do. I said, well, I was a fighter pilot. And that's, there was a lady in the audience said, oh, you're the top gun of love. And the whole room went, whoa. And, and he said, nobody's ever done that. Have you written a book? I said, yeah, I have actually. He said, rewrite it in the vernacular of a fighter pilot. So we got description and operation, normal procedures, emergency procedures, crew duties, all weather operations, the whole, <laughs> the whole thing. And the metaphor really works. Wow. No, I, I love that. And what, what, you know, what we really like about you as a couple, you just exemplify what we try to do here in Second Act, which is just living your life you know, after 50 and beyond. And you're really the poster children, as you call yourselves, of the, the 50 plus finding love and redefining yourself. We were both I in our 60s when we met. Right. right. I was 60 and he was 69. And that was 12 years ago. Do the math. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're having sizzling sex and a lasting relationship. Absolutely. We, we are. Do. We are. It's amazing. Yeah. The best sex ever. Oh, I, no, I love it. 
So I'm not kidding. I can't, I'm so happy. <laughs> well, and that brings us really to one of the tops we want to cover today, yeah. which is the you know we at Second Act we've done a lot of uh, you know covering the, the 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 issues of troubled relationships, the concept of great divorce, the this divorce rate that uh, yeah. is so, that, yeah that's that's really kind of shocking. So what we really want to focus on is the let's stop that how do we fix that and, and you know and can we and that's is kind of what you know when we come back let's take a quick break and when we come back let's talk about you know how can we bring love and sex and passion you know back to a troubled long-term marriage so stay tuned we'll be right back <laughs> Okay, we're back with Judith and Frank, uh, the founders of Top Gun Love, and we're talking about troubled long-term marriages. We, we, we mentioned it on the top of our show that the, you know, the whole issue with gray divorce, so many boomer marriages, people over 50 are splitting up. How do we bring love and passion back you know, to a troubled long-term marriage? How, how, how do you help people with that? You know, it's really interesting. If, if you look at a long-term marriage and you go back to say, well, remember when we were courting? I would do anything to make sure you were happy. I wanted to know what made you happy, and I would do it. Well, why did that stop? Now, it's 30-something years later, things have changed. You've changed, she's changed, he's changed. So now you have to stop, and this is what I want to talk about, the vision. vision yeah. yeah. So creating a new vision for the relationship is really a major tool that you can use. And, and we have, we have a, a relationship journal, we, you know, one of those really nice books with yeah. the little uh, ribbon thing that marks your place in it and everything. Mentor. And so every year, <laughs> right around our, our uh, anniversary, we get that book out and we write down what our vision is for the coming year. And then we look and see and read what our vision was for the last year. Say, oh, well, that didn't work out. And, well, we did that one. And then, oh, you had, you had surgery. Remember with that? You know, and so, so we put all this stuff <clears throat> in our journal. And it's just a way of reinforcing the connection. In a long-term relationship that's in trouble, it's because the trust has been broken. And usually, I mean, there are any number of reasons why the trust is broken. But... Bad communication, is, as Judah said, is really the number one thing. Well, you know what it is also? It's like you said, the person will not give their part in what they ask for, whether it's sexually, whether it's time, whether it's respect, whether it's communication. You know, people just get very stubborn about that, and they won't. And what do you think that what's going to happen if the person isn't getting what they want and the person refuses to give them what they want. And that happens to be the first item on this relationship vision that we talk to people and we give them, actually give them a worksheet and say, okay, how do you want your relationship to be? How do you want your partner to treat you? And how do you want to treat your partner? And what is it you want? <laughs> this one lady said, you know, they've been talking. She said, you know, I really like to have my toes sucked. He said, We've been together 40 years, <laughs> and you never told me you like your toes sucked. Come on. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's just stuff like that. So you, you have to tell each other what you want. We say to each other, if we really want something, I have a request. I have a request that you give me this, or I have a request that you don't do that, or I have a request that we, which is a very kind of diplomatic way to ask for what you want so it doesn't hit buttons. Instead of saying, well, you never do that. Or I want this or whatever. What that does, the, the thing is that I really trust that if he can, he'll give it to me. It doesn't mean that he always will. But I have the feeling that if I ask for it, I'm going to get it. And in most of the couples who come to me, they don't have that feeling. They have the feeling I'm going to ask for it and it's like talking to the wall. And that's a trust breaker. And if the trust isn't there, then you can't salvage the relationship. So you have to build the trust, and the way you do that is by doing things, by doing what you're asked. You know, what does it take to make your partner happy? Do that. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's very basic, it's very simple. That, no, great, great point. Was there anything else under the vision building? That, that yeah, <laughs> one, one last thing. So the vision takes in almost every area of your life. So now you've talked about your relationship and how you want that to be. How about your career? Are you to the point where you're ready to retire, or do you want to work? Do you both want to work, or are the kids gone? What's, 
What's the deal? So you talk about that. Maybe you just want to do charity work. But anyhow, t so we address these things at least. What are you going to create together? Yeah. What about finances? What are we doing? Are we putting money away for retirement? Are we, are we, who's spending what and how are we managing that? This is very important. How are we treating sex? And what are we, when are we going to have the talk about what I want and what you want and what I need and what you need? And how are we treating our family, other than our kids or whatever? What about the other relatives? And what about friends? Are we spending time with those people that I don't like anymore? Or what do, you know, what do we do? I so never you, did. Yeah. And what do we do about fun? What do we do? Do you, we like to go to movies? I like to go sailing. She doesn't like to sail. So, I get nauseous. You know, that kind of stuff. So you talk about everything. And, and then having the vision gives you something, makes you teammates. And then you were going to say something else about the vision? Yeah, I was going to say just basically vision means to see. And when you have like a vision, what is it that you're seeing from your heart into the future for you, for this as a couple? What is it that you're seeing? How do you want to treat each other? How do you want to live? What is it that your heart desires? This is very hopeful and this is very inspiring because if both partners say, okay, I see that. I see us loving each other again. I see us treating each other with respect. I see each other uh, touching each other. I see each other working through our issues. I see each other having sex. I see each other doing these things. Then you have something that's very solid between you. Well, and as, you, as you're describing this, it, it, it seems so obvious, but I never yes. thought of it like that. So right. Nobody, taught, nobody like teaches that. us this no, stuff. No, they don't. I mean, this is a thing that you need to do when you, when you first get married. Mm -hmm. You know, I love this story. Judith talked about it in our book about when she talked about oxytocin. And that's another thing in the touching. You know, touching creates oxytocin. Mm -hmm. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone. Mm -hmm. And so the more you touch the more you bond. So it's really important for you to spend time touching each other. Not sexually, not playing with each other's genitals, just holding hands, hugging. You have to have at least one hug every day. Oh, I, I, lo I love that. And what, you know, what's really great for this segment is that you've given hope again. Yeah. You know, there is hope and you've, it, it, there, there, I mean, I've heard some very clear things of Absolutely. what to put in place that, yeah, you can, if both people want it, you can. But you have to create it every day. Yeah. It, it, it takes an effort. It's like having a job. Right. You've got to do it every day. And that concludes the first part of our conversation with Frank and Judith. We hope you had half as much fun as we did. Frank and Judith will be back on another segment talking hot and sizzling sex after 50. So please make sure you subscribe to our program. Buttons right here. You don't want to miss the upcoming episodes. See you soon.